Ah, hello, everyone. So Subramanian Iyer here from ServiceNow. It's a pleasure to talk to all of you again. Today I have with me as part of the India Leaders Conclave, uh, the President and Chief Technology Officer of Hinduja Global Services, Mr. C. Subramanya. Now, Mr. Subramanya is responsible for all technical services, uh, for the technical services group at HGS. And he has over 20 years of experience. You know, he's, he's seen HGS grow from a small organization into this global, into this global company that supports healthcare, that supports telco industries across the world. And uh, Mr. Subramanya, thank you so much for joining us on today's podcast. My pleasure, Mr. Ayer. And uh, uh, you know, I, on, the, on behalf of the Times of India group, I would like to welcome you to this uh, India Leadership Series. Uh, the way this works is I ask you a few questions and then, you know, obviously based on your answers, we explore those areas a little further. Uh, you know, today's topic that we are really talking about is really about the global economic slowdown, the potential recovery, all from, you know, the huge COVID-19 pandemic that uh, has just tsunami global economies across the world. So one of the things that the Times, of, uh, the Times group is doing is taking the responsibility of rewiring our understanding of the world as it exists today and as it will uh, you know, evolve into tomorrow. So you've been through some of these uh, uh, tsunamis as, uh, as we speak, you know, whether it was the, the dot-com burst, whether it is you know, currently COVID-19, so on and so forth. So one of the things that I'd like to do, sir, is to first talk to you about how you are doing, how your family is doing in this COVID pandemic. Thank you very much, Ayer. Uh, you can call me Subhu. That will be more comfortable for me too. <laughs> uh, two short clippings. It is Hinduja Global Solutions. So, and the experience, as you rightly said, Ayer, 20 years of experience in HGS, literally to be completing 21 years this year. So we have seen the growth of the company right from a 23-seater, typically, like I always say, for uh, size of the company, which is with a simple 256 KB satellite link, which I started off the business. I have, I have spoken about this in some of my podcasts. And today I have multiple STM ones existing from multiple geographies, connecting to either the customer's data centers or to my point of interconnect, which is existing in the US. So we have seen the journey. The company has grown beautifully. The customers are absolutely at their peak. They're all to their satisfactions. We as HGS are very great in mining our existing customers, which is what is very essential for all of us to really sustain in this industry, right? Coming to the point of what you spoke on pandemic, absolutely, yes. None of us had really thought that, you know, every, every company in this IT, IT space had thought that if A geography gets into a problem, B geography will take over. If A city gets into a problem, B city will take over and you have redundancies, resiliencies, built in in terms of people, technology, connectivity, any of these, right? But this is a different sort of pandemic which really happened. It is, it's global. The nature of this pandemic was so global that you could have not really recovered from elsewhere. And, and it, is, it is not that, uh, you know, companies had planned for this to make work from home because a lot of geographies and a lot of countries where we start, where we service our customers had different regulations what we had to undergo also. I'll take an example of India. We need to literally be working from office and we can't have work from home as a policy which was approved by the Department of Telecommunications. So we had to literally lobby, thanks to the government, thanks to the NASCOM. We all were able to lobby with the Department of Telecom. Immediately, the whole uh, uh, regulations were modified and they were able to give us permissions for us to really make the people work from home. So that is purely from the regulatory perspective. Then moving towards talking, you know, various stakeholders inside the company, outside the company, right? We need to really look at, okay, how many of our customers' applications are ready? How many of our customers are ready to make this open? Have them discussed, re-architect some of those. When I say re-architect, they can't certainly go and redesign the application. They will come back and say, what are the workarounds which are possible? get on to conference calls with multiple clients. Again, 
the only thing which works in all this is teamwork i or i would definitely want to really emphasize this is the time where we have really seen the collaboration between the departments between the people and the teamwork with internal and external customers not to leave away the vendor partners who have worked with us to ensure that we are able to deliver services seamlessly to our customers i think this was the only objective which most of the people really jumped on today i can proudly say that those are days which are gone we have a huge amount of employee satisfaction we have a huge amount of customer satisfaction because of we really able to pull down and make things literally work from where we can it was a huge orchestrator job for a cio cto in an organization to see that how things move it is not that he is the one who does he has a collaboration he has a team of people who does not only from his department it's a hr team to really ensure that the people are available people are brought in the stops are dispatched to the administration transport department you know name the departments which really jumped in you can think of everybody right we always think that you know a lot of departments are back office trust me none of these are back office because everybody has to really showcase themselves either in front of an employee or in front of a customer right i think those were really done very beautifully orchestrated for all this need to happen you know at one major thing which we all know is the delegation of authorities which is very very important you need to have a responsibility and you need to have your authority and you need to have your cadence and governance calls at regular interval so that you don't really get on to things which have gone past and then you need to pull back i think checkpoints milestones goals all these needs to be defined it is literally what we call about you know raci matrix literally who will do what who has got the authority to take a decision who will you consult who will you inform you know these are very very important which all came into a place while we try to orchestrate and ensure the work from happens work from home happens while we are trying to do all this there is no there is no way that we can compromise on security because the clients will certainly want to because uh, if it is a typical brick and mortar type of uh, delivery what happen people used to come in people used to bring in the mobile phones they used to keep out of the delivery floor production floor what we call keep it in a pigeon hole and then walk into the delivery center either you receive a call or uh, process a claim or whatever it could be based on the type of business what we do right they will walk in and start doing the job but whereas if somebody is working from home like i and you are sitting and watching each other right and then talking if somebody is standing behind you need to really manage that because they would be able to have an e-teasing of what's happening on your screen right that could be one of it right, right? varieties of challenges right in, in fact if you try to use your mobile because it's handy with you try to bring in and type uh, in, and try to record something so one you need to have a you know manual controlled declaration from employee automated controls ai based uh, cameras which are really placed so that people are not really doing something if some such situation comes up you should be able to mask the screen or blank the screen you need to give a lot more confidence and the customers have to feel the comfort once the customer feels the comfort which he has felt as we speak over a period of one and a half years what we have seen because there used to be regular checkpoint calls with the customers information security team because a lot of us really access in the bpo ites industry access the applications which are hosted by our customers right so we need to secure all this unlike a brick and mortar mm -hmm. and you need to while you're working from home you need to secure all this i think these were all some of the points which we had to literally take care while we deployed work at home there are right. multiple things to really speak about i'll just pause here i would want you to really ask me what you think are relevant then we can go deep and discuss on this higher sure sure and i think some of the topics that you touched on are so critical whether it was the teamwork whether it was you know departments stepping up whether it was delegation of authority all of this had to happen at every single level in the organization and when everyone works with that common purpose in mind of of understanding uh, how do we take the company forward i think things start coming together i think this uh, terrible situation that we faced has brought out the best in in almost uh, every organization every person in every organization and and that is so wonderful it's, it's such a encouraging story it's a silver lining to the cloud so as to speak now one of the areas that i think is very important uh, you know is is your own experience now one of the things that you have spoken about in the past has been uh, dgcx 
right? The customer service, you know, view on how is it that you work with customers overall? Now, as you mentioned, there is a lot of work that needs to be done at the back end so that a digital workplace for employees is safe, a digital workplace for employees works, but then eventually it has to translate back into the evolved and the transformed customer satisfaction that you have to go and provide to all of these customers who are still in the same situation that every other corporate is. So how has DGCX evolved as a service during this period? Very good point, Ayer. I think all of us would have heard from multiple conversations in multiple podcasts or multiple webinars, right? Uh, you know, everybody started saying that digital has got accelerated, right? So <laughs> if you really look at it is definitely yes, there's no doubt about it, right? It all depends on not only the service provider like us, readiness of ours, right? Or the, uh, the cloud, which is available, which is one of the medium to really get the digital experience, right, to the end customers. So you need to literally look at multiple technologies, assess the readiness of the customer also, because a lot of customers would be running some applications which would not be ready for us to really access anywhere, everywhere. Or they need to do a lot of changes inside to ensure that we, as a service provider, access it from any location or access it through the office through an MPLS or through a VPN tunnel or through anything which you really create for you to have a secure tunnel to access the client applications. So one, as I said, security is very, very key. Digital is, which we call it as digital experience. First, I, I always categorize something like, you know, you need to have the best of the employee experience to ensure you get a, sure. the best of the customer experience, right? So digital is a medium what you really start servicing your customers with. We have gone ahead and did multiple ways to really do this. One, internal, and we as HGS as an enterprise, we need to really have our employees having a comfort. They do have a right connectivity. They are digitally savvy. And it's not that everybody is digitally savvy, right? During this pandemic also, you need to ensure that, again, you are I'm talking about a global population, right? When I'm saying we are an offshore and an onshore and a right shore company, right? So, and right. we have our models of our delivery happening globally local. So it is not that it's in India, you have a different age group of people who work with US, different age group of people who work with. You need to have a change management really done, including the training for the people to really do. Because so, mm -hmm. some of them will really come in and log in in the office, right? They don't have to really switch on the camera. They need to really do this and they need to have a background. And sometimes you need to have a video on. So, you know, yep. it's not very easy for people to really get to and that change and then training those set of people giving them a simple videos, tipping them at the right point of time and telling them, these are the ways which you need to do. We have sent you a PC, use this connectivity, put it in here, switch on the modem, connect it, then you get this connectivity coming on, right? Or you put in a dongle and this dongle is used for mm -hmm. this, do's and don'ts. I think it's a huge amount of digital education because everybody is not digital native, right? Because right. the new organizations, new set of eras of the Z, you know, uh, the leadership team, which you really look at, there are people who are digitally not native. You need to make them digital savvy and make them to embrace digital during this time while they need to really do the productivity. Because there is no way that we can really compromise the productivity to our client because he, he expects a set of experiences which needs to happen. So I think learning is very important. As we always say, learn, unlearn, relearn, which is very important for everybody. This became far more requirement for agents to really jump on. The agents, when I mean the customer service representatives or the ambassadors who are really talking to the client, all of them to jump on and understand a lot more to really see a lot more comfort with whatever they work with. So if right. you really look at a digital experience, it is not only an application what you pick up and start delivering a service. It is at all levels. I think in a value chain, if you really look at it's across the people whom you look at. In that, customer is also a very key uh, interface. And customer also should be digitally ready because, you know, typically what used to happen, I'm just giving you uh, an example, a call center or a contact center, a call will come, you may even transfer the call, right? We did that right. stop? No, the call still got transferred. Is there a digital yep. way to really do? Is there a change required from a standard operating procedure, right? So including all this, a huge amount of digital adoption happened. And a lot of customers who were ahead of the curve started trying to say that, okay, we will start diverting or we will start routing more and more calls towards our digital medium 
where uh, people like uh, me and you are uh, talking earlier you will start chatting and then you will start saying that okay my uh, this is what we will do and this is the experience and then start using the ai because a lot of chat tools were already available and how was right. the how was the quick integration with that with the knowledge base because you may not mm-hmm. want to give an experience which is not very pleasant to the customer because all all of us use the word seamless experience if it has to be really seamless it has to have a lot of intelligence built in right that data dip which has to be done with the customer's knowledge base trying to get the right answers i think it was it was a huge task whether it could be a developer whether it could be a database administrator or anybody if you really look at end to end as i said the value chain everybody had to chip in and try to see how can we give a digital experience right, right. it is no right. more a responsibility of only a customer service officer who manages the clients to give him okay see how do we make it to digital right it could be a chat it could be a social media interactions it could be multiple things as we keep saying right or it could be a non voice which could call email and lot more i think everything really got seriously accelerated like what uh, some amount of whatsapp joke was also going around it is this who accelerated digital if you really look at it, it is not this the c we actually need people really jump on and then start preparing i think we 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 were definitely geared up as an organization as dgcx or digital customer experience to be delivered so we were able to give all this to a lot of our customers who were ready and a lot of customers got ready in the journey and we were able to really support them right and that's such a wonderful story to hear right because it shows the agility of an organization to evolve with changing times now another aspect of this agility and and this is what uh, you know gladdens the heart so as to speak is that as the country went through trouble times as the world went through trouble times companies and employees stepped up significantly uh, you know their you know their contribution to uh, you know their corporate social responsibility whether it was um, you know vaccinations for employees whether it was home care kids or whether it was partnering with various ngos and the government now hcs has been no different uh, you know hinduja global solutions you you partnered with the government of karnataka you partnered with i think it was infosys for this uh, initiative called aapta mitra and you know now such initiatives are not ones that are forced through on employees right employees also willingly volunteer and employees also willingly contribute to some of this so the question that i have for you is can you tell us a little bit about how this worked for hgs and uh, how did aptamitra uh, you know what were the original goals and how did you contribute to the overall process good great ayer i think as you rightly said i think it's a responsibility for us to see also how do we give back right i think it has become everybody to really jump in one certainly you need to get your productivity your delivery giving it to your customers but also look at what else we can really do when this initiative really came up to us and when it came to my boss the ceo of the company he said so will you start working on this i said yes i would want to because while we were working on our making the whole business run with highly resilient uh, environment we thought let's continue doing this also so we did a we did set up a good task force within our own team thanks to the collaboration with nascom again nascom and the department of telecommunications and their set of people who were running this aptamitra project from the uh, they said that can you really start doing this and, and you all this typically i hear it is not that you can prepare a project plan then start doing it then do a planning no you just have to literally be on conference calls or on or on every alternate hour and see that what is that which you need to do and you need to take a decision at the flip of your mind and you need to really take some tasks which which with your experience and with a lot of collaboration with people be open hear out from people what are the right ideas and look at uh, look at how what can work a little more short term what will work a long term then really choose the partners use the ecosystem what you really do have right so we we literally did from hgs and through nascom nascom wrote to us and we started leading for completely managing the telecommunication the telephony solution the infrastructure for the people to really come in so what does this do is basically we uh, the the government decided on a number and that number was publicized that number right from a call routing coming into the call centers contact centers of not only hgs 
we collaborated with nascom nascom went ahead and wrote letters with the government of karnataka and nascom together with a lot of companies concentrix hgs and then infosys then this company step me and uh, one of some who really championed the whole thing a huge credit to their team also because there were a huge amount of project managers and team members and developers who came i managed the technology telephony infrastructure communication everything and collaborating with uh, various contact centers to ensure that we were able to organize a lot more desktops and what not for their people to come in and start logging in uh, the government with uh, i think indian medical association few picked up a few nurses who were there and made them to really start connecting to this contact center so they started logging in and the call started coming in you know literally supporting the people from rural everywhere in karnataka to when they call up the clear chain of command what they need to do whom they need to contact everything was decided by the the nurses we were able to build up the whole technology again when i say build we collaborated with the cloud offering which was available because department of telephone communication in themselves were running and the government was a part of it and they gave us the approval to start using the cloud so we used the cloud made the desktops ready made the connectivity ready and we were able to make the nurses to walk in for some amount of time into the office and they were using our facilities not only our facilities as i said some of these companies all these facilities were used the nurses came in and started answering trust me it was so beautiful it was seamless every every alternate day you know it started with every day every hour we reduced to moving to every evening to look at okay how things are happening today what is that which we need to do how many more nurses are required it's it's like running a contact center for a company the whole collaboration between multiple companies here huh? if you really look at here it is not that i know my set of people who are working in my company here it was collaboration between multiple companies and we may almost think that they are all competitors but in this it is a collaborative effort everybody came in got in their operation leads got in set of people got in their admin people made the facilities for the nurses who come into the office you know these are all we may think it is all simple but it requires a humongous task for everybody to collaborate especially during a pandemic because most of them will be working Absolutely. from home right make Absolutely. them connect get the get the department of telecom to work with us get the service providers to get connectivity to our offices fine tune the ivr look at where the ivr here you can't really have a call wait time because somebody is calling in pan pandemic right somebody is calling in a panic i have cold i have this how do i really do right from an instruction sets being designed by the uh, the government the ima the nurses being facilitated for answering educating them because again all these people are not really so much it savvy a few may be few may not be right to the extent of doctors who volunteered and came into our office and sat and did all this so i think it was it was a beautiful effort and it was very thrilled i think uh, the government also commended us and we we encouraged this and post things got stabilized we also did a lot more publicity on this we brought in jagal shrinat to come and speak we requested him and he came and spoke and then sudha murthy from infosys she came and spoke start using this get on to this and you take support from all these people so a lot of publicity was also done based on this i think it was more a cause where we need to have the people to really call in to get the support which was a huge activity we call it as nurse right. helpline that's how we did it right no that's that's so amazing to hear you know you know times of adversity is when you realize where your true, true strength is and i think uh, you know uh, uh, a number of indian corporates a number of uh, individual employees and you know companies such as yourself uh, you've been able to step up and and provide that next level of support that the country needs so that has been wonderful it also goes to show how technology can support the common man it's not just you know b2b it is b2c whatever model you want to call it at the end of the day technology is meant to help you know individuals meant to help companies meant to help countries and i think that's uh, you know that is what we just described as to how corporates could come together to help an entire country i i think that exactly such it a heartwarming like, story i said iir it is uh, thank you so much see. it keeps on going yeah. uh, the end beneficiary no, thank you so much for all that uh, you know you and ags have done as well uh, now we are unfortunately running out of time so i'm going to have to sign off with one last question for you you know in this age of hyper automation with ai with ml uh, do you have any any message for our viewers or you know for the people who are listening to the podcast before we sign off 
So I'll tell you, Ayer, most of the people really think that, you know, this automation, will it really take away the jobs? If you really look at, my point is very, very clear. I think it is everybody to move up the value chain, right? Everybody wants to really grow and do a lot of things. So I will give you an example of our own organization, the way we really reoriented a lot of our people and we how we made the people to get into the right roles. A lot of things in terms while we do automation because we need to do automation because it's a question of every company is pre-pandemic also. We had started a huge amount of automation, giving it, giving it to our customers because ultimately you need to look at how can you really use technology, leverage technology to ensure your customer experience reaches up to the peak, right? And all being done at the lowest of the cost or at the cost really being on. You can't really put in bodies to do everything, right? You need to really have an adopt, uh, uh, adaptation of automation, right? If you really look at a lot of embracing automation had started even pre-pandemic. Again, that is another thing if you look at, has started accelerating clearly during the pa pandemic time. Because if you look at digital is an top word. If you look at automation really comes in under the digital, a huge amount of activity was really done, right? So the experience of what we have as AGS, if you look at, we do a lot of work on healthcare area, right? If you 55 plus percent of our businesses in healthcare, the amount of knowledge base, which we had with the agent population, we created something called as a center of excellence, right? We looked at what are the things which are possible to be automated. Okay, it is not that something which is manual cannot be automated. Manual can be automated. Right. If there is an automation done, you can really look at what more improvements can be done on automation. So okay. one, using it for enterprise yourself, showcasing it to the client and ensuring it goes into the client system and how do we really run it? So it is an interaction of the human who has got the intellectual power, which is typically to see that, okay, if this happens, this, this, this other things. So the knowledge base of our people, we call that as a center of excellence and made the set of people to be a part of it, train them to really work on a lot more who are IT savvy, who all got into that automation field. Okay. They were agents, but they also had IT experience, bought them on. They have the domain experience completely, right? Using the domain experience, using the automation, the, the tools today available are so drag and drop you know what, you don't need to be so much IT savvy, right? I'm not saying it does by itself. You need to do some yeah. amount of decision which people will be able to. All these were completely done by our set of team, internal team members, the center of excellence, the knowledge base, what we had, as I said, the automation tools which are available in the market and collaborating and building bots and training the bots to really do things and then doing a right UAT and then trying to deploy it to the production. Because... It's the stages what you need to really do because you can't, yes, the humans will get mundane, humans may get tired, whereas the bots will not get tired, bot can do a lot more, right? But while you're trying to do these bots, bots can do a lot of things at a faster pace, right? Accuracy yeah. level is good and they can also do things, but understand the underlying infrastructure required because if Subhu and Ayer are processing some hundred claims, right, in a day, if a bot comes and if the set of instructions what you have given is clear to the bot, it can even process a thousand claims, right? If yeah, that has to absolutely. happen, you need to have your checks and balances for the bots also to be done, right? A bot needs yeah. to be monitored, started with a manual, means with a human, over a period of time, a bot started monitoring a bot. Mm -hmm. Because that's the level which we started moving in. And I was talking about the underlying infrastructure. All this really, as I said, if you look at in my start of the conversation, the data resides in my client's infrastructure, right? If you have to have a connectivity between your site to the client infrastructure, while you are at a processing speed of 100 claims per hour, an example which I told you, sorry, 100 claims per day or whatever it is, right? And if your bot comes in, you need to augment your infrastructure. You need to augment your bandwidth, right? It can't be that only an automation team works independently or a bot will work independently. Yeah. It's a collaboration okay. between human, collaboration between the bot or building the bot, and making the bot a lot more educated, make it more, you know, uh, fill in more and more knowledge to it so that it starts acting the way you need to direct it and build a supervisor bot also so that there's a bot mm -hmm. which is supervising the tasks, what it is doing. So I think it's, yeah. it's literally can move to the extent of like you use the word hyper automation. You need to really pick and choose 
what are the low hanging fruits start doing it test it because you know companies can really get into trouble if you don't really the journey when they start automation pick the right ones start doing a simple automation then start seeing what is that which you can really take it on to the next levels so i think it's right. the way to go organizations are doing it and we are doing it a lot to all our customers no and i think that is a truly amazing story right on one hand it shows the power of automation and on the other hand you know it also tells all of us that what is required is really uh, an adaptability to new skill sets that the industry demands it's not about you know can i continue doing what i was doing 20 years ago so the more adaptable you are the more you find that your your work life is enriched you know by automation and by more efficiency that is brought in and on that note uh, thank you so much once again subo it was a pleasure talking to you i really look forward to speaking with you again sometime uh, soon in the future thank you so much thank you subo here thank you bye bye